This is the Morning Swim Show interview segment for Monday, October 12, 2009. I'm your host, Peter Bush, and today we've got one of the best divers in the U.S., if not the world. David Budaya won the three-meter and platform diving events at last spring's NCAAs, and he did it as a freshman. And to cap it off, he teamed up with Thomas Fincham to win silver at the World Champs on the Synchro Platform event. And David joins us right now on Skype from Lafayette, Indiana. David, welcome to the Morning Swim Show. Thank you. So how's it going? It's going well. Are you America's best chance for a diving medal in 2012? Well, the United States is definitely on the rise for their diving, and um, I think that me and along with the a lot of other athletes are um, definitely on their way to success in 2012. So, is that a yes? <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. Well, because, I mean, obviously you're, you're a young guy. You're only a sophomore at Purdue. You're mm -hmm. already uh, winning NCAA titles and won a silver in the synchro event at Worlds. So, you seem to have found a comfort level quicker than a lot of people do at, at the highest level. Um, yeah, definitely the experience from the past four years has um, definitely helped me in international competitions. Um, Beijing definitely opened my eyes to the biggest spectacle in sports, and um, now having that experience, um, I think I'll be able to go into 2012 knowing what to expect and uh, definitely looking forward to that. Now, you're a pretty low-key guy there, David. It sounds like you need that morning cup of coffee just to get you going. Is that, is that an accurate statement? Um, well, it depends on the situation. I'm really upbeat when I dive, but really just a laid-back kind of guy. I guess that's probably the most important time. Yeah, it definitely is. Now, I know you guys just started the college season, and you did not compete last weekend. Um, why was that? Why didn't we see you in action? Well, we actually... Um, we, I just started diving. I took the longest break that I have um, ever in my, my career. So um, trying to get back on my dives is, is hard to do in three weeks. And uh, Adam Soldati and I um, discussed it, and we thought it was best that I not dive um, and just continue training and um, looking forward to the collegiate season. Uh, hopefully I'll start back uh, the first meet in the – October 23rd. So you're saying right now, if you were to dive, you would only get like eight and a halfs and nines? <laughs> exactly. It's just not good enough for us, David. Not at all. All right, so are you a lock to win three events at NCAAs this year? Am I what? Sorry. Are you, are you, uh, do you think you can win three events at NCAAs this year? Um, I, I think I can. It's, it definitely depends on how I'm training. and um, Diving is a sport where you can't really predict how you're going to do because you never know what's going to happen on that particular day, but I know that if I'm on that day, then um, I definitely will be at um, close to the top, if not the top. How tall are you, if I may ask? Um, I'm 5'9". Okay, that's, I don't know, is that average, or is that a little tall for um, It's definitely a good height for diving, um, but it depends on the athlete. Um, Thomas Fincham is 6'1", um, 6'2", six, six, and He's able to work with that, so it definitely depends on the athlete and how they handle their body. Okay, so Thomas, he's a good four or five inches taller than you. Does uh -huh. that make, is that a big challenge when you're trying to do a synchro platform together? Uh, I don't I don't think it is at all um, because we've been training so long together that um, we kind of know what to do, and um, it really hasn't changed with him growing and um we still look the same, and our training is uh, still spot on like it has been. Now, we should tell viewers, the, the reason your camera keeps zooming in and out, you've got <laughs> some, like, automatic camera moves with you, I guess. I don't, maybe it just likes extreme close-ups of David. Maybe it does. <laughs> we can see your pearly whites <laughs> <laughs> coming through clear on Skype. Uh, well, David, um, uh, what, uh, what is... I don't know, what do you need to do, going back to the beginning and then we'll wrap it up, I mean, what do you need to do from now until 2012 to make sure that you are in position to medal at the Olympics and to make sure America is in a better standing than they have been in the past couple Olympics for diving? Uh, well, the, the World Championships in Rome this summer definitely was a big step for not only me, but the whole U.S. team. and. 
Um, it's a lot better than where we were four years ago in 2005 World Championships. Um, what we need to do is continue training and really not worry about how big a dive we can do, but basically the, the main goal is consistency. And I think um, if we are consistent, then we will definitely be in the medals. Well, we wish, you, we wish you luck, David, and uh, we'll let you get back to class. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Thank you for having me. All right, that's David Bedaya joining us from Purdue University. And that is it for the interview segment today. Tomorrow on the show, we'll talk to University of Texas women's swim coach Kim Bracken. Until then, I'm Peter Bush reminding you to keep your head down at the finish. The World Magazine looks back at the memorable moments from the U.S. Open and Junior National Championships. On the cover is Missy Franklin, who was the star of juniors, swimming times that would have put her on the world championship team. Our coverage of the U.S. Open starts on page 8, where we highlight swims by Jessica Hardy and Chad LaTourette, as well as the men's 200 IM, where all eight swimmers wore briefs. Senior writer John Lone talked with Elizabeth Pelton about her quick rise from virtual unknown to world championship team member on page 12, and we continue our look back at 50 years of covering aquatic sports with a look at the years 1993 to 1996, as well as a comparison of the careers of Christina Egerzegi and Kirsty Coventry. Open water swimming enthusiasts can read Steve Munitona's story on page 18, which details how age group coaches are getting younger swimmers introduced to the sport. Our swim section features plenty of tools to help master swimmers improve technique, with tips from Carlin Pipes Nielsen and J.R. Rosania, and a week's worth of workouts from Omaha Masters coach Tom Samlin. World record holder Lois Kivy Nachman is this month's lane leader, and she's profiled on page 26. Robin Jacobs talks about coaching YMCA swimmers in the swimming technique section, and Michael Stott writes about handling a tricky high school swimming season on page 30. In the junior swimmer section, you can find our coverage of junior nationals and YMCA nationals, which begins on page 51. Premium members have a lot of bonus features in this month's digital issue. Many of our stories have embedded links, such as this video interview featuring Missy Franklin's coach, Todd Schmitz. Um, she was able to go to trials at, at 13 last year. We got some valuable experience from that meet. And I think that, you know, ever since then, we've said 2012 is the goal. Coming off the meet in Vancouver, it was definitely not an easy decision on what, what meet we wanted to go to focus on. We, at the end of the day, we really wanted to make the World Cup team for, for November when she, they're going to go over and race a couple short course meter meets. Um, and, and I think that we really cemented that spot for that team. And uh, I think that's going to give her a little more international experience. And, and so that when she does make that next team, whatever it may be, I think she'll be more mentally and physically prepared to be there. And on page 10, premium members can watch eight of our most memorable morning swim show interviews from this summer. Tyler Clary, Elizabeth Beisel, and Amanda Beard, just a few of the people that you can watch. If you're not a premium subscriber, you can go to SwimmingWorld.com and click on the subscribe link.